my UFO week. Um, I'm out in the woods. It's been horrendously wet and horrible so far this week. This is Tuesday. Yesterday I didn't go out at all. I sat on the sofa um, and started to sort of tack things together and realised that, you know, some of these UFOs that I've put in my bag, bags to sew up later, are actually nearly finished. And I'm like, why on earth have I just put it to one side? Is it because I don't want to turn a hem up? Anyhow, yesterday it threw it down and the poor girls didn't get any kind of walk at all. I was going to run yesterday, but that all fell apart. So we're out in the woods now. It is not very pleasant. It's about 10 degrees. It's raining, it's windy, but there's enough rain and enough shelter for the girls to really quite enjoy themselves in the woods here. I don't know if I'm looking into you or not. So I'm going to stop, flip the, flip the phone around and you can see the girls because I get the impression that you all like seeing these dogs. They are rather gorgeous, but I am biased. So here they are. I don't need to go very far actually. It's not much exercise for me. Just the lady who's done umpteen steps at school today. But look at these colors of green. Oh, and the sun's coming through now, so. We might just get a rainbow. I thought I'll come out now because there won't be anybody else around. I can see them up there in the distance. Um, there's been one other little dog so far. They're underneath the village old chestnut tree. Down there in the distance. Oh yes, I cut my finger yesterday. <laughs> um, this horse chestnut tree is the fairy tree. It's the one there they go. So I have been finishing things and the first thing I finished is one of my Jussie Marionaire tops um, which is absolutely gorgeous. I think it might be a little tight on me at the moment. Shall we put it on and see what we think? Okay, I literally have just popped it on. I haven't even got my glasses on and I am so, so happy. Um, I know I, I am starting to lose some weight, but oh my gosh, look, it's got the neckline like the um, Atelier Brunette sweatshirt. It's got the open neckline and for some reason it's suiting me. Um, you can see the two little buttons here. Two, and I got two little Atelier Brunette buttons. I'm so pleased with my stripe matching. Um, this fabric will have come from Lamazi. Oh God, I'm so comfortable in this. Uh, last year, before, or during, was it during lockdown? Or before lockdown, I decided to have a go at making my very first Maison Force patterns. And I bought these before I started vlogging. These were the very first two that I ever bought. And I want to finish them. I know they're not gonna fit me at the moment because I have expanded. Oh. The Pippa shorts, I'm going to turn it around to show you the line drawing on the back. It's got like a petal effect on it, so let me show you the shorts. And Tony Brunette a while ago did a tensile. And here we have the shorts coming together. You can see the little overflap there at the front. Now, I do know that I've got a little bit of undoing to do on this because I've realised that something isn't quite right. So remember, sewing is doing and undoing, and it is work. So that's what needs to be a bloom top. There we go. And the reason I like that is the detail on the back. And I am just, as I speak to you, I have the bloom top in my sewing machine. I'm taking it out because I realised I've not hemmed it all the way around. But as you can see, look, I'm holding it up. The reason I like the bloom top is, can you see that lovely scalloped edge there? I've tacked that all the way around. And the other, I've got to do some hand sewing to sew the sleeve. The facings will have to be held down. But I'm going to top stitch around the edge here of the neckline of the, of the um, garment. Oops, there we go. There's the neckline coming down. And on the sleeves at the front, we have got a little scallop on the sleeve, can you see that? There you go, a little scallop there. See if it's any better on the other side. It is there. So I'm, I'm sort of, my head is juggling several projects at once. Because I've got a pair of flint collops that are pinned together and just need sewing. 
it's crazy when we have these piles of UFOs we really need to sort of get our heads around them we are Sunday the 17th of October waiting for the Connie Cross to start it's going to go off any minute now listen to the noise look at this how many three minutes all these dogs down here it's absolutely it's misty rain it's what the weather people want to call mizzle Thorsby Hall it is meant to be beautiful we're going to get wet but we're going to have fun and I'm definitely feeling better because it's now 10 o'clock at plus at night and I'm sewing and I've just done my samples for the buttonholes now if you remember I'm, I'm a great one for saying we need to do samples I'm just going to put it there a bit more in the light for you to see that is an old mask that I never used. Now it's the same weight of fabric as the one that I've done there. And I got my manual out and thought I'm gonna check the manual. And it just made me think, how often do we not check our sewing machine manuals to see exactly which of the multiplicity of functions that they've got do we need for one particular thing? So not only have I done that, I've actually, I'm going to swing you around just to try and show you my sewing machine screen. So what I'm wanting to show you here is how the buttonhole can be changed and I've got it set to alter the width of the bars. Now the bars are something that if you can make them a little bit narrower it's better for finer fabric and I have discovered that this one here, this screen, if you watch the bars on the buttonhole will make the bars on the buttonhole smaller. Now I took them down for this viscose to three and a half and they're much smaller. Then I discovered I could make the density of the stitch. I knew I could always do that, so I can make it look really loose, or I can make it tighter. And what it's, it's set for 70, so when I hit white, I know I've hit the set. So all I did was I made it slightly longer. I think I took it to 80, and it allowed the fabric to go through the um, buttonhole foot and everything much more smoothly. Now the other thing I discovered I could do is to make the distance here between the two bars of the buttonhole bigger by toggling on this one here. So the standard is six but if I turn it I can make it bigger and if I turn this way I can make it smaller and I took it down to three and I ended up with a near perfect buttonhole for the garment that I'm making and I'm going to try and I'm holding you on my lap so I'm really hoping this works now I do my buttonholes on shirts vertically if you have a look at a man's bought shirt the buttonholes are vertical because if you have a horizontal one it will pull like so oops and there is one of my buttonholes I'm not really going to be able to see it very well. Can you see this buttonhole here? Isn't that beautiful? I'm really pleased and it's a really delicate buttonhole that fits in with the weight of the fabric. So now I'm going to sew them on and that's one more thing done. You can see here I have set up to sew a button on. Now when I buy buttons I always end up buying more than I need because I'm frightened of breaking them when I sew them on. Okay, the answer to that is sew them on by hand, but I've got this foot for the sewing machine, and it does work sometimes, and today it's going to work because I'm determined it's going to work. So I have marked where my buttons are going, but when I start this off, I actually turn the balance wheel like so, just to make certain that it's going to fit. And look, is it going to hit it? Look. Oh, it's going to go in. All right, are we ready? So all being well, and I close my eyes at this point. Whew, one done. And that's how I feel when I sew them down. I think I'm gonna break the buttons. I am so pleased, there we go. So here we are, back again, 
I'm going to have a go at doing a stretch buttonhole because that's what I need to do for this last Jossie Marionette. So off we go and give it a go and see what happens. I'm doing it using the um, blush coloured thread that I've got in the same machine at the moment. And I will, before, obviously before I do the buttonhole, I'll change it to navy blue because my idea, my thoughts are to put the buttonholes along the stripes. So the buttonhole will, will need to go. To put it on here. This is the tab that the buttonholes will need to go on. So I thought I'll put them here on that little stripe and the buttons. See, tiny, tiny little button. If I can get three little buttonholes in, I'd be so happy. I'm gonna try and do. I'm just gonna do what it's programmed to do first. So here goes. So we have a tiny, tiny little buttonhole here that I've just done, and it really is very, very tiny. It's got, it, it's quite different to any sort of, any buttonhole I would have expected to have made. I can't, you can actually see it. I'm going to try and do it on this, this one here, but I'm actually going to try and thicken up the sidebars slightly. If I can remember how I did it last time. I've actually made the buttonhole slightly denser, it should go back now, there it goes. Oh, that is absolutely lovely. Look at that. And this is a stretch buttonhole, and I've probably made it slightly too dense. So I'm now going to go back in and try and make it less dense. I'm going to play around, and I will be back with you very shortly. Back at the machine, but I have just spent time cleaning and oiling it, and I cannot stress enough how important it is to keep these machines cleaned and oiled and it just doesn't matter whether you've got the machine I've got, I've got a Benina, uh, any sewing machine, even down to my little old Elna, I kept that immaculately clean inside because any fluff or dirt can affect the tension and, the, and your stitch and the quality of your stitch and that's what you want to maintain. All these machines nowadays have got fantastic tensions and the like so keeping them clean and oiled is essential. Earlier on in this vlog, you will hear my sewing machine making the most appalling noise before it does a buttonhole. And this is the first time I've used it ever since, hence the reason the tools are out. But the reason I've brought you really close in here is I've got the cutter. Now, I know a lot of machines have got thread cutters. We all have start, stop buttons. And I think a lot of the start, stop buttons now do have these built-in cutters um, attached and they can get fluff and little bits of thread in them. And believe me, if they've got thread in there, if that thread gets caught with your bobbin going round, you will jam up your bobbin, damage your stitch, cause yourself no end of problems. Just for getting out the little brush that comes with your machine, I've got tweezers as well for mine to get into that little bit there. They are nearly finished. I'm going to hold them up, can you see? But they are nearly finished, but they are not finished. And the reason they're not finished is I had actually sewn the waistband on and I wasn't happy with it. But before I took the waistband off, I decided to try them on. And whilst they fit me beautifully around the legs and around the crotch and around the waist, they don't fit me yet around the hips. So I'm afraid I stopped making 
and it goes back into the box until I'm ready because I want to get it so that the waist and the hips are fine for me because I may have to take the waist in very slightly if I lose weight off the hips because my waist will go down. Fits beautifully on the waist at the moment but if I don't put the waistband on and I stop now I have got the time to adjust the pleats by taking in at the pleats so that there will be slightly more fullness and slightly more room in the culottes but at least it will fit me on the waist as well as the hips. So that's why they aren't finished but they are a lot more finished than they were when I started this vlog. Similarly with the Pippa shorts by Maison Fauve as you've seen earlier they are nearly done but not quite. This is the Bloom Top by Maison Fauve. Absolutely love this top and it's made in Colvalt Canopy by Atelier Brunette and I have to admit this has been in my makes bag and then to finish bag. I started it before just at the beginning of the pandemic before mask making took over and it got shelved for mask making but it really is beautiful. I'm going to spin it around and show you the back. Now I'm reason I'm showing you things on my model is not that I'm frightened to put them on it's just a bit easier to show you on the model with me being here on my own. Yeah, can you see this beautiful scalloped um, uh, piece here it's it lays over the top and I think they like doing overlays because the next vlog I'm going to be doing is the Maison Fauve Fay combination which is a jumpsuit or uh, a, a dress you can do it with trousers at the bottom or a um, skirt at the bottom and that has overlay as well it's absolutely stunning there and if I come round we have a scalloped edge on the sleeve here as well now as I turn it round a little bit more here to the front this dress form is actually at my size because I set it up at my size when I got ready for Hannah's wedding. And you can see why I can't wear it at the moment now. Look at this. It doesn't close at the hips. So that's my goal. By next summer, I want that to close perfectly. And I want to have redone my dress form. So with a snap, I'm going to put the next one on. And here we are. This is the one of the top, the two tops that I wanted to finish. Three tops, including the Maison Fauve one. This is one of my Breton tops that's left over from doing my Breton challenge earlier in the year. This is the Jussie Marionaire, which I think is probably the best example of the Breton top that you can get. There's a full link in the description box below. I'm pretty convinced, yes, I think all the pattern instructions are in French, but Google Translate is fantastic. It does have the little buttons. If you remember going back to the sewing bee, they were saying that these Breton tops should have buttons and it has at the front a bound neckline and I made two of these, so. Now this is the Jussie Marionaire that I've been really excited about finishing and I'm absolutely delighted with it. I'm going to wear it out to breakfast this coming weekend uh, because it's my 60th birthday on Saturday and we are going, I believe, to the Ivy for brunch after parkrun. We're a family of parkrunners. I blame Tristan and there's another story that I can't tell you now. Something is happening, something really exciting is happening and it's happening in the spring. It's not children, it's not babies, you won't guess what it is but I can't wait to share it with you. And I'm sure you'll all understand why I'm so excited when I finally can share it. I'm just waiting to be told I can. Um, so I'm going to wear this to brunch with a pair of jeans and it is a true Breton top because the fabric I bought from a company called Discovery Knitting, which are based in the UK, and they sell this as the correct measurement of the Stripe. So if you can remember they said the stripe, the coloured stripe should be a centimetre and the, the white stripe should be two centimetres. But even if this isn't two centimetres, I know that if you double the blue you get the white. So it's double the colour is the white. So I've got my three little buttons on the um, shoulder and as you can see I put the buttonholes in the stripe and I've tried to get it the button to line. So I've got the cream on that side and the blue on this side. So here again you can see how the neckline's been finished. It's bound underneath and then finished off with my cover stitch machine. To say I am delighted with this, it just puts it mildly. I really think that I need to make another one. But as I keep saying, at the moment, I'm not going to be doing anything like that. I don't want to be starting anything else new just yet. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching me over the past few weeks. I'm really sorry, I'm going to keep apologising. You can still hear it in my voice. The cold, if you get it, you have my full sympathies. I just hope you all, if you've got it, that you all feel better quickly. Just bear with it. I've been so fortunate, it's not gone on my chest, which um, as an asthmatic, and I'm quite a bad asthmatic, I rattle in the morning with the amount of drugs that I take. But I've been and I've maintained my levels of fitness and activity as much as I can through this cold. And I swear that that has actually helped me. So it's only the days when I've been running the temperature that I couldn't go out. And that was maybe just two or three days through the whole cold. But my nose, every time I've gone out and I've run, I felt absolutely fantastic. So maybe that's the way forward with a cold. Get out and get walking, get running. But just get outside and let the, the fresh air clear your head. And it has helped. Um, but there again, you know, obviously you get everything else that goes with the cold. But you go out and do your exercise and then you come home and you want to sleep. I love this top. I feel so guilty that it's taken me so long to finish it. But I do hope you've enjoyed watching what I've shown you today. And I will see you with my next vlogs. Now, I can tell you what's coming up. I've done a review with my friend Jean of her Janome 5 six, Start again. Her Janome 5060QDC. And I have to say, I've always been a bit uncertain about Janome sewing machines. This is a corker. It's a right little cracker of a sewing machine. I totally love it. And there's just something on it, and you can see when, when I show you it, you'll think, you'll see why I'm so excited about it. And then I'm going to make, there's my dress, my Make Your Birth Year dress, and my Faye jumpsuit by Maison Fauve. The Faye jumpsuit is on the sewing machine now. The dress is finished. I've vlogged that ready for you. So I've got two little vlogs coming out. And again, if this gets delayed, it's because I'm 60 on Saturday and I've got friends and family coming. So see you on the other side. Have a lovely weekend. We're coming up to the weekend. I hope you're all well and thank you for watching. If you've liked what you've seen, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and join me on my sewing journey. See you soon. Bye bye.